Hey, trucked up guys and gals, how do you use your truck? How do you drive it? Do you use it as a people mover, as a family vehicle, contracting? Are you out in the bush with it a lot? Do you do a lot of off-roading? Let me know in the comments below. That makes a big difference in what kind of truck you buy. You're gonna make a decision about your truck based upon what you're gonna use it for, right? We're gonna go out and shop for a truck that meets our needs. A people mover, we've gotta have more of a super guru type. If we're bringing kids, doing a lot of camping, then we buy a truck that does those things. If we're using a truck for contracting, the ability for that truck to haul and tow or or do whatever it needs to do to make sure that job gets done properly. And if we're going into the bush, off-roading or forestry or mining, where we're in the bush for long periods of time, we gotta have a tidy tank in the back, we have to have a reliable fuel source. This makes a big difference in what we buy. And it makes a huge difference if you're considering an electric truck. You love trucks, all trucks. You haul and tow, snow wheel and off-road, take the kiddies to softball practice, and your sweetie to lover's lookout. Ooh. This channel is all about how the truck is changing, but not the lifestyle. We're loaded up, kitted out, and ready to roam. That's a fact. But are we ready for the future? Welcome to Trucked Up EVs. You see, with an electric truck, it wouldn't be all that bad if we had the infrastructure in place that actually makes sense for them, which we don't. What's really shocking is, for example, where I live, there's a public utility that's putting in superchargers, DC fast chargers. Same thing's happening in the US. There's a lot of infrastructure gaps, massive gaping holes. You hear these nightmare stories in the United States all the time. Well, in Canada, it's even worse because the new systems that, for example, BC Hydro is installing, the fastest are 100 kilowatts. Most of them are 50 kilowatts. I had the joy of going to Hope, British Columbia, about two hours from Vancouver, and they had a DC fast charger that was 25 kilowatts. Now, if you know anything about electric vehicles, you know that all of that is worthless. It's complete crap. It doesn't help anybody driving an electric vehicle because you have to sit there for to get anything that's worth your range and your time. What's parked next to these things? Tesla superchargers. What do they charge at? Oh, I don't know, 250 kilowatts, 300, and the worst part is it's like they've been set up to fail so these people these these pencil twiddlers they're either really stupid or they're really smart you have to have a reliable charging network i have to give some credit to chief twit elon and ford ceo jim farley to discover that really the answer is in infrastructure to start they're saying oh range doesn't matter no range matters a lot if you're a truck owner range is everything that's the number one thing stopping most truck owners from buying an electric it comes down to whether or not it makes sense for their business or what they're doing. They'll buy an electric truck if it's going to save them thousands of dollars. And they're going to have a way less maintenance cost, break and repair, tune up and part replacement and fuel. Holy crap. Fuel is a massive expense for businesses. So if you can eliminate those costs, they don't care what kind of vehicle it is as long as it's making them money, doing a better job for them. So yeah, range does matter. Sorry guys. Till we get there, charging is everything. Infrastructure is everything. And it's a disaster because they're all broken. Oh yeah, is this a surprise? Good old BC Hydro. This is their 100 kilowatt hour DC fast charging center. Right over here is their 50 kilowatt hour DC fast charging system. Yeah, 50 kilowatts. That's not very fast, but 40 minute charge, limit your stay. But they charge you not by kilowatt hour, they charge per minute. So the slower, the better. Oh, and just to add insult to injury, this one's been down for three days. Pull up to Electrify America. They're all busted, vandalized. Nobody's servicing them. Half the times they don't work. They're junk. So the only reliable network's been the Tesla supercharger network work. And thank goodness that's going to be opening up to non-Teslas. But is that the game plan? Oh, well, we tried. We put in these 25 kilowatt fast chargers that you have to sit at for nine hours if you want to charge your vehicle to full. Oh, by the way, we start charging a lot more money after 40 minutes. Nobody seemed to use them. Oh, we don't understand. We put them out there nobody they went to the tesla one so obviously why invest so much money in the infrastructure people just aren't going to step up and use it yeah i don't think they're that stupid i think they're smart and nefarious
But in any case, they have to work. They can't be broken. I go to a charging station, 100 kilometers, 80 miles from my house, went to fill up only two of the damn thing. Tesla's got a dozen of them next door, which I can't use yet. And next to them is these two, two fast charge. One is 50 kilowatt, one's 100. Mm, I wonder which one I'm gonna choose. Plug in and go do some shopping at Canadian Tire. Yeah, I'm a real truck guy. I plug in and all these red lights start going off and the thing starts blinking and beeping. It seems that it's having a little bit of a wardrobe malfunction. Unplug it from your truck immediately. It's failing. Yeah, there I go. Plug into the 50 kilowatt. You have to charge much, much longer to get the same amount of electricity and end up paying twice as much money. Oh yeah. And of course I went over their 40 minute limit and then I get charged an even higher rate. Does that sound fair to you? Does that sound like a good system? Now think about the truck guy, the business owner, the drywaller, the contractor, the plumber, the electrician. We're using their trucks as trucks and they're out there and they've got one or two charging stations to choose from over a huge distance. Like there's not a lot of them yet. And they get to them and they're broken. If you're just using your truck for short distance, you're fine because you can use your house. Cheapest way to do it anyway. All these supercharger, DC fast charging systems, they all cost a crap pile of money. Not as much as gas, not as much as diesel, a fraction of that, especially where I live. But no matter what, it's cheaper. But for a business, you gotta be able to get your fuel when you need your fuel. And that's just not happening. You're stranded. Then what do you do? Go plug into your, your buddy's house and stay overnight, eat Doritos and watch movies until the morning? You're screwed. What kind of crap is that? The two things that have to be addressed is one, minimum 150 kilowatt charging units themselves. Most vehicles now are more than capable of 150 kilowatt. In fact, most of them are 250 or 350. We've now got 800 volt architecture vehicles. It means they can charge a heck of a lot faster. We gotta catch up. Already the technology is going so fast that the charging stations have to plan ahead. What we're seeing is they're so far behind, they're looking at their own butts and it's not a pretty sight. Two, democratization of the rate. This per minute crap is a ripoff. It's designed to be a scam. It's not fair, especially for people who own a smaller, less expensive EV. They bought a used Leaf, they bought a Bolt. These are good, reliable vehicles, but they charge slow. So should they be penalized? Should they pay three times the rate as somebody who's driving a Taycan or an Audi? Does that sound right? No, it isn't. We need to democratize a system. And Tesla felt we needed to democratize a system. That's why they stood up and said, hey, this is crap. And they introduced a system where they are now per kilowatt. So if they're per kilowatt on all of their systems, why the heck isn't everybody else? If you drive right across this country and you go to Flow, BC Hydro, if you go to the United States, you're seeing less and less of this per minute crap and more of the per kilowatt. And that's because you can't rip some people off and benefit other people uh, with a different rate. You have to have the systems actually work. There's a step. And we need to get a method of supplementary power that's proprietary, that's not actually part of the vehicle itself. For people who own trucks to be able to go out and buy a tidy tank for their electric truck, that they can go into the deep end of things and they know they're gonna be able to get out. That is the ticket to get a lot of people who use trucks 24 seven to think about moving over to electrification for transportation. The reality is that if we see the charging network improve and we see these efforts being made in proprietary technology, it benefits all truck owners. Owners, all those who are driving internal combustion, all the gas, diesel truck drivers. Why? Because if electric trucks start to chew into that diesel and gas market, that means demand's going to fall. And what happens when you have falling demand? You have an increase in supply. You also have a decrease in price. It becomes a more competitive marketplace for every truck owner. So if you hate electric trucks, you probably want a better charging network. You want to have all the options for these electric trucks. You want a lot of people who do think that this might work for their business or their life to buy them because that means that your type of truck is going to come down in price. So it works for everybody. That's my rant. Hope you liked it. Thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to little channels like mine. We'll see you next time.